Now, the rest of the story. Once upon a time in the dark ages of medicine, in a world devoid of anticoagulants and antihistamines and antibiotics and antiseptics, there was an antidote for just about every ailment, a solitary treatment for myriad of disorders, and the ancient prescription was laughter. Laughter. No more than a positive mental attitude, specifically merriment. Laughter. Ha, 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 laughter. Henri de Mondeville was a professor of surgery who taught and practiced around the turn of the 14th century. His prescription for recuperation was mirth, M-I-R-T-H. A surgeon could be assured of his patient's complete recovery, de Mondeville declared, by allowing his relatives and special friends to cheer him up and by having somebody tell him jokes. Conversely, the surgeon must forbid anger, hatred, and sadness in the patient. And this was the common position of medieval physicians. Surgeons and doctors disagreed only regarding the form in which humor was to be administered. Three hundred years past de Mondeville's time, Richard Mulcaster and Robert Burton wrote individually and extensively on the therapeutic nature of laughter. During the reign of King George III, there was an English physician, Dr. William Batty, now recognized as a pioneer in the field of mental illness. And not only did he regularly prescribe laughter in the treatment of his mental patients, but Dr. Batty once had a sane young patient with a virtually inaccessible abscess in his throat, and that abscess had enlarged to the point that it threatened the young man with suffocation. And finally, after Dr. Batty had exhausted his repertoire of medications, and his young patient was about to strangle, the desperate physician resorted to humor. He set his wig on crooked, made silly faces, until he had evoked eruptive laughter. And what do you know? It burst the abscess and saved the patient's life. In 1928, an American physician, Dr. James J. Walsh, published an impressive book-sized treatise entitled Laughter and Health, In it, Dr. Walsh attempts to unravel the mystery of why laughter increases one's resistance to disease. We're only beginning to understand. Editor Norman Cousins wrote in 1976 that he had laughed his way to recovery from a degenerative spinal condition, and this led many researchers to re-examine the subtleties of adrenaline metabolism and the occurrence of beta endorphins in the blood and even the electrophysiology of the brain. Almost 700 years after de Mondeville forbade his patients to be angry or hateful or sad, stress is now almost universally acknowledged as a potential root cause for some illnesses. And yet Henri de Mondeville was hardly the first to make such a suggestion For it is in the search for new answers that the old answers are often justified. I quote, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. King Solomon wrote those words in the book of Proverbs, in the Bible, 3,000 years ago. And now you know the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. You know, many of us don't laugh enough. We take life a little too seriously. We forget to laugh. Did you know you can forget to laugh? According to the Mayo Clinic, when it comes to relieving stress, more giggles and guffaws are just what the doctor ordered. Doctors are still learning about the positive effects laughter can have on the body. It's true, a good sense of humor can't cure all ailments, but it can certainly help. Laughter has great short-term effects. When you start to laugh, it doesn't just lighten your load mentally, it actually induces physical changes in your body. Laughter can stimulate many organs. Here's how. Laughter enhances your intake of oxygen-rich air, stimulates your heart, lungs, and muscles, and increases the endorphins that are released by your brain. Laughter activates and relieves your stress response. A good laugh fires up and then cools down your stress response, and it can increase and then decrease your heart rate and blood pressure. This gives you a good, relaxed feeling. 
It can soothe tension. Laughter can also stimulate circulation and aid muscle relaxation, both of which can help reduce some of the physical symptoms of stress. Laughter isn't just a quick pick-me-up, though. It's also good for you over the long term. Laughter can improve your immune system. Negative thoughts manifest into chemical reactions that can affect your body by bringing more stress into your system and decreasing your immunity. By contrast, positive thoughts can actually release neuropeptides that help fight stress and potentially more serious illnesses. Laughter can increase personal satisfaction. It can also make it easier to cope with difficult situations. It also helps you connect with other people. Laughter can improve your mood. Now, many people experience depression, sometimes due to chronic illness. Laughter can help lessen your stress, depression, and anxiety, and may make you feel happier. It can also improve your self-esteem. In our day-to-day -day lives, it may be hard to find things to laugh at. But funny things are all around us. Now, I don't mean to find something funny at the expense of others. Don't pick on people. That's just cruel. Laugh with people, not at them. Now, I love to watch funny movies and TV shows. Hearing Mr. Harvey's broadcast reminded me of a scene from the 1964 film Mary Poppins, starring Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. In the film, Mary Poppins is asked to help her Uncle Albert, played by Ed Wynn, get back down to Earth. The last time this happened, it took them three days to get Uncle Albert down. Laughter lifts his spirits and lifts his body as well. Bert and the Banks children soon begin laughing at Uncle Albert, and they begin floating as well. Because it's a Disney film, they begin singing the song, I Love to Laugh. Man, I love that film. During your stressful work day, take a quick break or two to watch funny clips on social media. If you get yourself into a stressful situation, find a way to laugh about it. People may look at you like you're the Joker from Batman, but hey, that's funny in itself. The Mayo Clinic suggested trying laughter yoga. I had never heard of this, so I had to know more. In laughter yoga, people practice laughter as a group. Sounds absolutely crazy. Laughter is forced at first, but it soon turns into spontaneous laughter. You may end up laughing at the fact that you're forcing yourself to laugh and other people are forcing themselves to laugh as well. It sounds nuts, but apparently it works. Make it a habit to spend time with friends or family who make you laugh. Pranks can help, but only if you know the person being pranked is good-natured about it. Some people hate being pranked. Now, while filming Ocean's Eleven in Lake Como, Italy, Brad Pitt arranged for notices to be posted around town that George Clooney was a bit of a diva. Locals were told to only address George by his character's name, Danny Ocean, and to never, ever look George Clooney directly in the eye. It took a while for George Clooney to figure out what was going on. But you know what they say about payback. George Clooney saw some of Brad Pitt's personal stationery and swiped it. George sent a note seemingly from Brad Pitt to Meryl Streep offering her acting advice. Meryl Streep is often described as the best actress of her generation. She'd been nominated for 21 Academy Awards, the most nominations in history. Learn a few jokes, even if they're dad jokes. I love dad jokes. At one of my previous jobs, I would tell my boss, I've got a joke for you. His head would immediately drop. And his response was always, oh no. I'd tell my dad joke and without any kind of a smile, he'd return to work. Sometimes if the joke was really bad, he would just shake his head. This did not deter me. I saw it as a challenge. It became my goal to make him laugh, but it only worked a few times. Here are a couple of my underappreciated jokes. Two cannibals were eating a clown for dinner. One cannibal looks at the other one and says, Say, this tastes funny to you. Mm. Two muffins were baking in the oven. One muffin said to the other, Man, it sure is hot in here. The other muffin replied, Ah, a talking muffin! In Mary Poppins, Bert tells Uncle Albert, who is floating from laughter, I know a man with a wooden leg named Smith. Uncle Albert replies, 
What is the name of his other leg? Come on, they're not that bad. Okay, they're pretty bad. Do you have a good joke? Leave me one or two in the comments. But, but seriously, don't take life too seriously. Make the time to laugh. It will do you good, and it will do those around you good as well. I guess the Reader's Digest claims are true. Laughter is the best medicine, and it's absolutely free. I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching, and now you know the rest of the rest of the story.